In this video tutorial, we will look at a thermal analysis using ANSYS of a long thin fin. This will be a 2D plane rectangular uh, geometry and the, the length of the fin is 0.3 meters and the height of this fin is 0 0.01 meters, that's 10 millimeters. So it's made of structural steel. The base is subject to a temperature of 150 degrees. The surfaces, the top surface, the leading edge and the bottom surface of these fins um, have a fluid temperature of 20 degrees and a heat transfer coefficient of 80 watts per meter square Kelvin is applied. We are interested in obtaining a steady state thermal solution and plotting temperature contours and calculating the heat transferred from the base to the fin. We start workbench and drop the steady state thermal onto the project schematic. We can go to engineering data and check that the material property use 60.5 for isotropic thermal conductivity for structural steel is OK. We can close that. The geometry, by default, that will be 3D. So that needs to be changed to two dimensions. And then right click on geometry and new design model or geometry. Select XY plane and go to sketching. You can view the plane from the front and also zoom in to sketch your rectangle um, accurately. You need to constrain the first point and the center and then the second point anywhere else on the XY plane but we can create correct dimensions by choosing dimensions, horizontal so I'll select the lines and that's my first horizontal dimension and a vertical dimension of this line to this line so that creates V2 we can then enter the dimensions so 0 0.3 meters and 0 0.0 one meters. So that's 10 millimeters in the thickness. We can fit view and that's effectively the only thing I need from the sketch. I can go to modeling and on the XY plane I can see that sketch is there. I can highlight that sketch and create a concept of surfaces from sketches. And click on apply and by default the operation is add material. I don't need to define a thickness for in this case. So once I create the concept, click generate and that generates one part and one body. So one surface body defined. Back in workbench project schematic right click model and click edit to start ANSYS mechanical. In mechanical the geometry transferred from design modeler is a surface body and by default it's got an assignment of structural steel. You can click on geometry and look at what is the 2D behavior. So in this case it's plane stress, which is fine. We can look at the mesh and define a sizing first of all. And we need to define it on this area. So I click on the rectangle area and apply an element size of five millimeters. So if we click on generate, that creates a, a 
coarse mesh, which will be fine for the thermal gradients we expect for this model. So next is to apply the boundary conditions. Click on steady state thermal, A5, and then by default the context is the environment. We can define a temperature boundary condition, and that will be on the edge on the left. Click on that line, click on apply, and the magnitude is 150 Celsius. And the rest of the geometry will have a convection applied. So we can click on this line, the leading edge, and the bottom line and click on apply. So on these three edges the film coefficient is going to be 80 and the temperature is defined as 20 ambient temperature. A very important point here however is the units. So the film coefficient we applied by default has 80 watts per millimeter square centigrade. Now our example had 80 watts per meter squared, so we need to change the units to make it consistent. So let's go and change the units to metric meters, kilograms, newtons, seconds. So you can see that the film coefficient is uh, quite different, a million times difference here. So we need to make sure that the film coefficient we are applying is 80 watts per meter square degrees centigrade. So that's applied and under solution we can go to context, we want to see the temperatures and the heat fluxes and also we want to see the heat transferred from the waste. So we can do that by dropping temperature onto the solution and that creates a reaction probe that can also be created from the probe tool as a reaction. So we are ready to solve. Click on solve and we can click on temperature. We can see how the body has 150 degrees at the base which is dropping to about 20 degrees at the leading edge. The heat flux can also be seen, how much heat is being transferred as watts per meter square, which is the highest at the base, of course. And if you look at the reaction probe, that gives us 1277.6 watts. So on that edge, that much um, heat is being transferred into this fin. If we wanted to find how the temperatures changed over the length of this fin, it is possible to create a path plot. To be able to do that, we need to create a, um, a construction geometry. So that will be a path. So the path will require two points. So in the starting point x is 0, so y is 0 0.005, that's 5 millimeters, and the second point is as x is 300 millimeters or 0 0.3 meters, and y coordinate is 0 0.005 meters. So that we define the path from point 1 to point 2. And what we can do is use this path in the solution. When we define a temperature, click on temperature, by default the scoping is on the geometry selection, but what we can do is click on that and scope the solution to the path we just defined. So we just need to enter the name of the path, which was simply path, and when we right click and evaluate all results, 
we can see how the temperature is changing from the base to the tip as a graph. So this graph is available as a tabular data and you can right click and export that to a text file. Another important point regarding the results is if you look at the temperature we are looking at a side view of the fin. If we rotate the model you'll see that it's actually a 3D representation of a 2D model. Now uh, the geometry was uh, by default given a unit thickness so this was one meters um, when we look at the temperatures and the reaction probe that reaction probe is over a one meter length um, of this fin so if your um, structure the fin is only half a meter long that will be um, carrying dissipating um, half of this um, heat and you can change that for example if you go back to surface body change that to uh, 0 0.5 and then solve again We can look at the reaction probe and um, we can confirm that the heat transfer there is now 638.78 watts. So this concludes the uh, steady state thermal analysis of uh, a two dimensional um, fin problem.